YOLO Phonic, a man who's known for cooking. We are sitting amongst a legend. <laughs> beautiful thing about my career is that I felt that I could never stop learning. There are moments where things are going to be challenging. It doesn't matter where you are. If it's a rainy day, there's always an opportunity behind that. Producer and also some writer. Collaborated with Kid Funk, stay true behind the scenes, performed on Kai FM, worked with artists like Aries, Blackie. It's beautiful when you already have a community to remind you of like who you are. DJ performances at events like Rocking the Daisy. And shifting your focus to other things that you can do. Focusing what you can control. Collaboration with brands, KFC, Durex. Just have someone that's understanding. Where do you find these people? I found mine on Twitter slash Inc. You can reach yeah. people that you didn't even know. Yeah. And now your mix is now being played in a place and you hear it and you're like, damn, this is powerful. Yo, welcome back to the Seacast. So last week we mentioned that we wanted to give you guys an announcement and we are super, super excited to share with you that we are going to do a giveaway at a thousand subscribers. So we mentioned that this is a community. You guys have invested a lot into the growth of this community. We literally have doubled subscribers in the last month or so, and we want to continue that momentum by giving back to you. So what we're going to do is by the time we reach a thousand subscribers, we're going to give away a laptop to someone in our community. So your mom's uncle, brother, sister, cousins, moms, aunties, whoever, we need you to tell them to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Let's get to a thousand subscribers and when we get there we're going to give away a laptop to a member of our community and hopefully that's going to help empower you to be able to achieve whatever it is that you're working on and yeah thank you for being a part of the journey that is our announcement and i don't want to take too much more of your time so just a quick reminder to like share subscribe and let's get into the next episode so we're back again we're back again and today we are cooking we're serving it up redefining what it means to eat and you'll see that we've upgraded from forks to spatulas. We decided to switch it up a little bit today. So, yeah, in light of our guest today, who's also been cooking, <laughs> if you follow him on, on Twitter or, or X, I mean... Yeah, whatever it's called these days, eh? What is it called these <laughs> days, bro? Like, who actually calls it X? I called it X the other day. Mm. And someone was like, why'd you call it X? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it feels weird, eh? It feels so weird. Weird as we rebrand of the century. But anyways, we're here today with Yolophonic. Yo, what's let's up? go, let's go. <laughs> yeah, a man who's known for cooking. So we out here today. I'm gonna dive into some of the ingredients behind mm. his success. I have to first go through the highlight reel because okay. there's okay. an extensive list here, okay. and I'm gonna have to read off the list because it's long, man. <laughs> so Yolo Funic, trap alternative R&B so producer and also some writer. Yeah, 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 like songwriter. I never knew that you wrote. Yeah, I think it's interesting, right? So as a songwriter, you can be a producer. It's They kind of intertwine. So a lot of people, when you hear the word songwriter, you would assume that it's just writing the lyrics, right? Yeah. But as a producer, when you contribute enough to a uh, beat, for example, you could be considered as a songwriter. So it's kind of both. Okay. Um, it's been like I used to write lyrics as a kid. That's how we started off. But yes, it it leans more towards the production side of things because I feel like that's my strongest point. So yeah, just for context. Hey man, you're gonna unpack that more. I'm <laughs> keen to do it. Yeah. Started producing in 2013 on Free Loops. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna go back to those days. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Featured on the SoundCloud podcast, Freshman's Magazine, Producer of the Year 2019. Yeah, yeah, shout out to Come Freshman. on, let's go. Collaborated with Kid Funk, Stay True, Behind the Scenes, performed on Kaya FM. Worked with artists like Aries, Blackie, <laughs> The Big Hash. Yeah. Collaboration with brands, KFC, Archive, Durex. DJ performances at events like Rocking the Daisy. Ooh. Cotton Fest, <laughs> over 630k plays on SoundCloud and 450k plays on Apple Music and Spotify. Yeah. We are sitting amongst a legend. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so I, much. I think one of the, my favorite things about these accolades is the SoundCloud part. Yeah, dude. Oh, SoundCloud, man. Dude. Sound, like, oh, I owe it my life. The reason why SoundCloud really stands out for me is because I'm someone who I used to DJ like I don't know if you knew this, oh, well, I used I to know. DJ way back know. in the day during school yeah. so on a previous episode I kind of dived in a little bit more into that but a lot of my entrepreneurial spirit came from 
way back then. Oh, okay. Because that's how I'd like make money to like go out with my friends and whatnot. So I'd just play gigs oh, within the school okay. for birthday parties and stuff like that. Crazy. And something that was big back then was if you wanted people to listen to your mix, you had to upload it onto SoundCloud because that was yeah. the easiest distribution. Yes. You know, this yeah. was back in the day when it was like people were Bluetoothing songs to each other. Oh, yeah. crazy, crazy, yeah. So SoundCloud was that platform to kind of get your stuff out there. So I'd be out here like putting my SoundCloud link in <laughs> BBM broadcast lists, <laughs> like listen crazy. to my mix. Crazy. There was one time when I went to the shops just to chill with some friends on a Friday yeah. and someone was playing my mix. Bro. That's I was like, oh, that's, dude. that's, I made that. They were like, no, you didn't. <laughs> I was like, nah, I'm, I'm that guy. They're like, are you yeah. not? <laughs> so I think from that, it kind of showed me the power of SoundCloud and how you can like reach yeah. people that you didn't even know. Yeah. And now your mix is now being played in a place and you hear it and you're like, damn, this is powerful. It is. I think that was one of the things that kind of opened my mind to this digital world and how you can use it to progress whatever it is that you're working on. Yeah. And I think being someone who was a part of SoundCloud back then, I also follow, followed an artist named Flume. I don't know if you... Oh, yeah, yeah. He's a legend. Dude. Dude. He's... So like I remember following Flume yeah. on SoundCloud when he had like two thousand followers or something like that. Crazy. And then you see that progression mm. and how now he's like playing at these major events. He's now broken into the mainstream, working with these massive artists. And I think that was also like kind of like a reaffirmation of SoundCloud. So yeah. when you say SoundCloud, I'm like, dude, you're on this journey, and I feel like I'm following the Flume journey <laughs> when I follow your music. That's beautiful, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, dude. Like. SoundCloud has been such an incredible platform in terms of like inspiration, experimentation, and yeah, I really owed everything because I think that's really how people connected with me and found me, you know, so I got to connect with a bunch of like really cool people, not just locally, but also internationally, and it's just like, yeah, oh, dude, I'm so grateful, man. Like would I owe you, SoundCloud so much. Would you say that there's like also like a community element around it? There definitely is. There definitely is. I think what's beautiful about the people that consume music on there is that they're really more open to hearing something different. You know what I mean? It's not, they don't want to be spoon fed. It's not like going onto MTV and expecting to hear like the top 30 hits, you know, on Billboard or whatever. It's like, I'm really open to hear anything and just, you know, put myself in a whole new world. So I like that. I think that's something I really appreciate about that. And it's, uh, dude. oh man, just talking about it, just, uh, it, it really warms up my heart. I'm gonna lie. Why? I think it's cause it's really organic in the way that people find you, right? So when I think about a Spotify or an Apple Music or Deezer or any other platform, you, you really have to go far and beyond to kind of push your music out there. Whereas with SoundCloud, it organically finds people, like it finds your community. I don't know how to explain it. Like its algorithm is so, it's different, man. It's just so different. So that's why I would say that, that it just helped me find a lot of people and a lot of people found me as well. So what you say it's yeah. the type of people that are on SoundCloud. Because when I think of yeah. SoundCloud, I think it's a different listener to what you would have on like an Apple Music. Yeah, definitely. Example. Whereas I, from my perspective, I think Apple Music is more of like a, mainstream kind of yes it's like a means to an end basically. yes 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 whereas yes, yes. people on soundcloud i mean me as a soundcloud user yeah, yeah i think something that's slightly different to me than someone who might be using like spotify like music is i like finding hidden gems yeah so i'm willing course. to go and like search for it and spend that extra time to yeah. look for something that is like something that some other people might not have found yet. Yes, yes, of course, of course. And when I relate it back to school, those Bluetooth days, yeah, bro, yeah. I'll, I'll never forget like <laughs> being at school, like at aftercare, yeah. after school, playing a song on my phone, people would be like, yo, bro, please Bluetooth me that song. I love and I'd that. never like to Bluetooth the song. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a flex, man. That is such a flex. Dude, I love that. I was like, bro, if you want to listen to this song, you listen to it with me. <laughs> Unless you need to trade a song, then we can make a deal. <laughs> oh, I love that, man. Oh, that is so awesome. So I think back then there was like that thing of like finding music yeah, and, you know, yeah, being yeah. able to share that with people, yeah. but also finding something that's different. And I think that absolutely. might be what's different about SoundCloud. I don't know if you... Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Same way. Talking about SoundCloud, I want us to take it back. Okay. Okay. 2013. Yeah. Well, like 
I was gonna say take it back to the pick up the phone I love you days. Oh, crazy, crazy. Okay. But that wasn't even the beginning, beginning. <laughs> That's the thing. That's the, <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, eh? Hey? So wait, like, what came before that? Because when I was doing my digging, yeah, that was the latest I could find. Yeah, yeah. But I, like, when you listen to that track, it's a good track. Thank you. Yeah. So much. But I know, like, the first track that you made <laughs> was probably not a pick up the phone, I love you kind of track. Nope, it was not, unfortunately. Um, so I think I would, I would say two things, right? One being at the time, so when I started producing, a lot of it was, like, kept on my laptop. So I wasn't really uploading stuff. It was just a matter of, like, figuring out how to produce music and just going about that, you know? Um and then only towards 2015, 16, around there, that's when I would start uploading some of my stuff. And I felt a bit more confident in my work, you know. So I started uploading on there. And yeah, you know, at the time you think, oh, yeah, I'm on to something, I'm cooking. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, <laughs> but then as you listen to other music, you're kind of like, okay, it's good. But then there's still some work to be done. So cool. Yes, I would upload you know more frequently and stuff but because i hadn't paid for soundcloud um so i don't have a pro membership and why i'm mentioning this is you you're limited to how many songs you can upload on there as a free user so with time as i've uploaded more i had to kind of delete some of the older stuff that's why I like like the first track you'll see on there is from 2018 so yeah, it's just one of those. I think it's it's quite unfortunate because it would have been nice to hear like the progression over the years. But yeah, I still have some of that stuff on my laptop, so I could just play that for people and just be like, yeah, this is some stuff from 2013. You know? drop, drop a mixtape, bro. <laughs> yeah, dude. Throwback mixtape, dude. Yeah. There'll be some gems in there, I'm sure. But now, like, let's let's go back to now. You mentioned that there was three years of kind of like what I would call training. Yes, where, yes, yes, yes. Where you kind of got to the point where you're now com comfortable with putting what you're working on out into the world. Yeah. But now, I want to go back to even before that. Okay. okay. What pushed you to actually like sit down <laughs> and download Fruity Loops? Like, let's go with there. <laughs> okay, okay. Um. So I'd say, so as a kid, you know, what a lot of creators will tell you is that as a kid, you know, you've loved music, you've consumed music, um, your family has put you on to like a variety of different sounds. So my uncle would be the guy that would give me like the R&B gems. Uh, grandfather would give me jazz and like, um, you know, like pop music, but like 80s pop, you know, that kind of vibe. And yeah, just hearing all of that and enjoying it so much. A part of me always felt like, ooh, I'm going to be the next Michael Jackson. Like that's that's where my head was at. Like, so it's interesting that like with my love for music it started more so from a vocalist perspective instead of like i'm gonna be like the next timberland or whatever so it started off there right and then fast forward to around 2011 so my friend tells me about fl studio and he's like yeah dude this is software i use da, 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 da. you know <laughs> tap in and try it out and i was like okay cool so going into it right my thought process was that I would produce my music, but from a vocalist perspective. So it's like, cool, I'd sing on my own production instead of having to rely on um, like another producer to produce the song for me. Yeah. So that's, that's where my head was at. But um, from 2013 going forward, I realized I felt a lot more comfortable kind of behind the scenes and just producing. So that became my focal point okay so yeah that's, would you say that you're more of an introverted personality I, type i would i would, I would. yeah <laughs> hey, look, anyone seen this guy at an event dancing <laughs> you'll understand that michael jackson influence <laughs> oh, dude it's always there man it's it, it never left it never left funny enough but yeah i think it's interesting because it's almost like i'm rediscovering myself you know and it's dope that like through the DJing, I've been able to do that and like just feel more comfortable being outside and just, you know, enjoying myself. Mm. Yeah, one thing that I find is like, you know, with the work that we do in the agency, all of our work is online. So a lot of the time we're working together as a team, but we're working online. 
Uh, so I'll find that I'm at home throughout the week. I don't yeah. really leave the house. And I find by the time you reach the end of the week, you're just like, oh, I need to just, I, I would say I'm more extroverted though. Okay, thanks. So I get energy from being around people. But when you're inside for so long, you know, you kind of need a sense of balance. Like literally to the point where I would sometimes just go to the shops and just like, just to be around people, <laughs> like yeah, I get it. Yeah. So I don't know if you is that is DJing like that for you? It's just like a way to kind of get out, or yeah, definitely, definitely. Because um, throughout those years where I was like just producing mainly, you know, just in my in my own world, right? Um, I got very comfortable just being behind the scenes, you know, being the producer that just you know just um, is more active online and stuff, you know, just speaking to my people on Twitter or whatever platform. And yeah, it's it's very easy to just like be in that little bubble, you know. Um, so yeah, the DJing definitely um, helped me like get out more, socialize more, um, also be just more comfortable being outside. You know? So yeah, definitely that. So how do you go from, you know, downloading Fruity Loops, practicing for three years, and then now at the point where you're at, where it, you are able to sustain yourself like this is yeah. what you do you don't yeah. work any other job or yeah. anything. there's people out there that want to get to that point yeah but they are might be like you know at that point where they've just downloaded free loops or they might be dropping a few things here and there yeah like what does that process look like what are the ingredients to that success that you are enjoying today <laughs> um i would say it's a plethora of different things right one being consistency so you, you have to be really consistent in like your journey so whether you're a songwriter or a producer or a dj you know it's a matter of like being consistent and in, in, in focusing on the craft and honing it you know to a point where now you feel like you can add value to other people's lives so at that point then you would start so i'll speak from a production point of view that's when you would start putting it out there or reaching out to artists that you'd like to collaborate with and then, you know, talk to them, tell them. Um, I think one of the most important things whilst doing that is providing value for them. You know, I think that's something that a lot of people don't really seem to mention because generally you would think networking is about, oh, how do I benefit from this? How do I get to the next step? But what really helps you is providing value for people first and then, you know, later on then you could kind of be like oh i'd like to work with you i know you're a bigger artist you know so you might help me out um so in that in that way then you build your resume and now you have something to show for the next person that you reach out to so it's like oh i've worked with this person before you can have a listen to the song so you can get an idea of like you know what it sounds like so from there you then also collaborate with other people outside of music. I, I found that to be very beneficial. So other creators that are really just trying to get themselves, you know, um, going, right? So that's your videographers, photographers, graphic designers. Reach out to them. Talk to them. Like, also, like, find ways to work with them and, you know, make things happen. Um, and... I'd say another one would definitely be to, funny enough, to go outside, right? So you have to show up for other people, support them in their endeavors as well. So go to events, you know, see who's, you don't, you don't even have to like figure out like who's operating it, right? More so from a supportive standpoint. So you're there to support what they're doing. You're there to support the artists on that lineup or the creators, you know, and just being a part of a community, you'd be able to find yourself in places where it's like, oh, what do you do, by the way, you know? So now people are more inquisitive as to like what you actually do. And if they hear your stuff and they like what you do, they'll be like, oh, actually, I've got my own platform. So, you know, like it all works out in that way, you know? Um, but yeah, being supportive goes such a long way and being authentically supportive. So you have to be authentic in your support. It can't just be a thing of, oh, yeah, if this person thinks I'm like their biggest fan, then I'll get the gig, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it I think if you take out. it too far, it actually kind of starts backfiring. Yes, yes, way, yes, right? yes, yes. Now you're looking needy yeah, and yeah, yeah. desperate, you know, and that's what you don't want. So it's 
it's it's a matter of like just being genuine in your support you know um that those things just go such a long way so yeah yeah you mentioned quite a few things i'd really like for us to unpack those a little bit because one of the things that you mentioned that stuck with me was that thing of offering value yeah and i think a lot of young people when they maybe not even just young people just people in general when they think about offering value they a lot of time we go to money yeah yeah yeah. true true, money is value yes yes. and we don't realize that like when you started i assume you weren't making much money i mean when you start anything you're not making money from it yeah so when you say value what is that value that you're talking about i think i think that's that's what you kind of need to figure out so from my point of view providing value to someone let's say for example a videographer right that would be me providing music for some of their videos and then maybe one of the other days you guys could meet up and then they could shoot a video for you mm. you know that kind of thing so it's it's figuring out what may be valuable for them you know so it's understanding who you're talking to and taking it from there bro it's so crazy because a lot of time in the creative space you'll see people that like someone else might think is delivering mediocre work not realizing that the person that they're delivering it for maybe just values something different to what you do yeah yeah. and i think value is really about putting your mind or your feet in the shoes of the person of course that you're trying to offer value to yes because people will be willing to pay for things because they value different things so like let's say you're a videographer right yeah let's say you're not the best videographer you don't have the best camera but let's say you show up on time yes. at every gig that you do. Yeah. And when you're speaking with the client that you're working with, you offer ideas and you expand on the idea. You know, that videographer would probably be able to work with people that value that, even though they're not the best videographer. Yeah, yeah. There's people out there that value time. There's yeah. people out there that value ideas. Of course. So I think when it comes to value, a lot of the time, because of social media especially, yeah. we put a lot of emphasis on the way things look and the way things sound. And we kind of neglect the way people feel about things. Yeah. And I think that feeling part is a huge part of value. If you're able to make someone feel something through what you're doing, they feel appreciated because you you came on time or Absolutely. they feel excited because you came up with a new idea. Yeah. Those feelings is what propels people to actually put you on and exactly take out their wallet and give <laughs> you money. Absolutely. Absolutely. That that's yeah, you hit it right on the nail. Um because I can even see that from the DJing point of view, you know, the fact that um, people would know that I'd arrive on time for my gigs meant a lot than the actual service itself. You know, they could enjoy the music, they could see everyone's having a good time, but it's just the little things, you know, sometimes the little things go such a long way. That event planner, no matter how good your set is, if you came late it and is. now they're stressing about the lineup and like whatever's yeah. coming next, yeah. if they're not going to care what music you play. Exactly. They're going to be feeling stressed because now you've messed up the lineup, for yes, example. Yes, yes. And I think that's that thing of like empathy. Yeah. Like being able yeah. to put yourself in the shoes of someone else. If you're able to see where the other person's at and help them in whatever challenge they're facing, yeah. bro, people repay you for that, hey? They do. And I've seen it through your work as well. And now that also leads me to now, you know, you mentioned that you have to go out and I'm sure as an introvert, that's been like a bit of a process or a challenge to overcome. I also have friends that are more introverted that struggle to like go and be around people all the time. But one thing, when I look at your journey, you're talking about how you are able to network with people abroad. Yeah, Yeah. Now you don't, I mean, I don't know if you met those people in person, but I assume maybe not. <laughs> not yeah, not yet, not yet. Just just a few. So it's crazy. It's crazy how like as of late, there's now this um, you know, um appeal to the African market, right? So a lot of we're seeing a lot of artists now coming into the country. So because of that, yes, I've been able to meet a few of them, which is surreal. But did you meet them in person or did you meet them somewhere else or online? So yeah we we met and connected online right and we had spoken there for a while and then yes then we because of this um (laughs) because of this growth right now we're able to well people are bringing them into the country so i do get to meet them in person so would you say that it's necessary to have to go out 
like if you're able to like network with these people that are overseas even, yeah, 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 yeah how how like is it necessary to go out number one and number two how did that networking happen because you didn't meet them in person so how does yeah. that happen um one it is necessary it's always necessary because at the end of the day you have to be very conscious of your immediate environment as 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 great as it is to have um connections with whoever whoever right from the states or whatever it's it's very important for you to cultivate like your immediate environment so you have to go to your local shows you have to speak to your local artists you have to connect with those that are here right it's very important because it just doesn't make sense for you to try so hard to connect with someone that's in like another country or another continent um, and you're not able to frequent that side either, you know, because it just ends there. It's just an online conversation that doesn't do anything for you. So it's very important to go outside and just, you know, connect with whoever's around, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting how the music industry works because you have people locally that are connected to people internationally that you may have never thought you would have had the opportunity or the chance to talk to or network with. So, yeah, like, you, you can't neglect the the local scene, you know, whilst doing that, so, yeah. And then going back to the, you know, the international network that you've been able to tap into, how were you able to do that? Through the music, so mostly through SoundCloud. Um, it's It's... It's it's us finding each other's music and then connecting on an Instagram or Twitter, for example. And then, yeah, just speaking to each other about, like, maybe potential collaborations or, like, how things are in our own scenes and what our struggles are. You know, like, just having human conversations. I think that's something that we really need to emphasize when connecting with people because um, more often than not, we tend to prioritize the business side of things. And so if you're speaking to someone generally, it's like, oh, let's collaborate or let's build something. Um, and you tend to forget that, you know, they're a person too and they're going through their own things and they're dealing with their own challenges and stuff, you know. So it's very important to have that balance with things. And yeah, so essentially I had found and connected with quite a few people on SoundCloud. So I started there and then it moved on to an Instagram or Twitter we continued like a conversation and yeah, that's, that's how it happened. Well, coming back to that point that you mentioned now about, you know, connecting on a human level, how are things? <laughs> they're good. They're good. They're good. You know, um, I think it's been an interesting year because the first half of the year was, yeah, financially shaky, man. Oh God. It was just like, whoa, bro, what is going on? So, I can I can now confidently say that things are picking up, so it's great. Um, mentally, things have been in a good place, probably since like COVID has like <laughs> it's not gone, it's not gone, guys. Let's remember that. But it's yeah, things things are much better now. Things are much better since that's eased down. Uh, my mental's also been improving as well. So yeah, um, I can say things are good. Things are pretty good right now. That's good. No, I'm, I'm glad to hear that things are picking up. I think in the creative space, in the beginning of the year, it takes a while for like yeah. things to get momentum. Yeah, A lot of like businesses, they kind of starting out again, you kind of have to reboot the, the engine and true. like take some time to get going again. Yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, that's one thing that I've noticed. And also like touching on that business side as well, you know, entrepreneurship is such a... And I, I view what you're doing as entrepreneurship. I don't know if you view it the same. I do, way. I do, I do, definitely. Because you're definitely. basically running a business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is yeah. a business. Yeah. And one thing that you realize, like, it's a roller coaster, man. It is you up when you're up <laughs> and you're down when you're down. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. 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 So tell me, like, give me can you give me an example of like a down? A downer. Yeah. I guess. So a good example would be that uh, last year, the frequency of gigs that I had received were like pretty high. It was just like, oh, dude, one after the other. It was becoming like a weekly thing. Like, dude, I'm here this week, next week, I'm there. All of that is happening. 
And then the down with like early on in this year, it's kind of like uh, once a month or maybe one every, every two weeks and stuff, which isn't bad. I'm still grateful for, but it's just like when you, when not even used to, but like when you reach that momentum and it's just like, oh, I'm adapting to this high, you get used to that. So then when you're at your low, it's like, <laughs> yeah. damn, bro, what's going on? Like, <laughs> And yeah. it's it's hectic because economically things aren't getting cheaper either. So yeah. it's just like you have to deal with all of that as well. So yeah, just navigating all of that. So that's definitely a low. So how how did you navigate that? And I think maybe I'll share a little bit of my experience, and then maybe it ties into what what you you know how you navigated that low. Okay. But one thing that I've learned with the highs and the lows yeah. is like when you have the high, don't adjust too quickly. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So true. Because you start so getting used true. to that. You do. You and then do. the low comes. And if you literally, like, let's say you got a big job and, like, you got X amounts of money and you're like, nah, I'm going to go and I'm going to buy that car that I wanted to buy for, like, the last two years. I've been working hard. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then you go and you buy the car. And then you hit a low. Mm. And now you spent all that money on the car. Yeah. You've got all these other things to worry about, the insurance, the petrol, all yeah. of this stuff, because your lifestyle level has increased. Yes, yes. So as you, you've you increased your lifestyle, your financial situation is also requiring more money. Of course. And then when that low comes now, it's even harder yeah. because your lifestyle has increased. And now you're also hitting a low. <laughs> like, I, I've been there as well. I've yeah. gone through that same thing. And I think... And the lesson that I learned from that was like, when you're at your high, be really wise yeah, <laughs> with how you like invest that yes. money because yes. there will be another low that comes. Yeah, and that course, opportunity is really just giving you, or that situation is giving you an opportunity to prepare for when that storm comes. Those. Because storms yeah. will always come. Always. And sunny days will always come. It's always. The nature of life. Always. Is, yeah. is that, or was there more to that that you also learned like navigating that low? Or maybe... Maybe there's like a mental, because I also know like when you're going through those lows mentally, yeah, dude, it feels like something's like on top of you. It does. It does. For me personally. <laughs> um, so like, yeah, what else, like what other lessons would you say that kind of low taught you earlier this year? Um, another lesson it taught me was that it's, it's, you know, like, it's important for you to also find other things to do. So what's beautiful with my career, for example, is that I'm a producer, I'm a DJ, I'm a songwriter. So I do have multiple avenues, right? So just because the the gigs were low didn't mean that I couldn't focus more on the production. You know what I mean? So it was, it was essentially just shifting my focus to something else and understanding that, like you said, there's always going to be the highs and lows. That's just entrepreneurship, you know? Hey, hold on. Hold on, I just need to remind you very quickly to like, share, and subscribe and leave a comment down below about what you think about this episode. We need to be able to tell the algorithm on YouTube that we are creating content that is valuable. So please engage with this content, whether you're listening to it on YouTube or on Spotify, or whatever platform, please engage. It just helps us reach more people, brings more people into the community, which means more access to knowledge and opportunities for you, a member of the community. So please don't forget to engage on this video or this audio podcast and leave a like, comment, or subscribe and give it a share. Thank you so much. We'll hop back into the episode. So it's 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 being mindful of that and not beating yourself up or like doubting yourself and thinking, oh, do they not like my sets anymore? <laughs> you know, <laughs> finding any reason under the sun, you know, like self-sabotage is... It's, it's easier to do that when you are in those slums, you know what I mean? So it's very important to just remind yourself that it's it's down, like things things aren't good right now, but it's, it's only temporary, you know? So shifting your focus to other things that you can do, focusing what you can control, you know? I think that's, that's something I was very cognizant of. So yes, I took a step back from like DJing essentially, um, but it helped me focus more on the production. Mm -hmm. So I had time to work on more music and stuff like that. So yeah, there's two things that stand out to me from what you've just said. And the one is focusing on the positive and yeah. identifying opportunity in your challenge. Yes. Because, and that's an entrepreneurial mindset. And I think that's a very valuable mindset to have, especially as a young person in South Africa, because 
we know challenges here. Yeah. We deal with challenges every day. What happens a lot of the time is we get overrun by the challenges and lose sight of the opportunities that are behind them. Yeah, true. So like from your situation, the way you described it was literally how you were going through a rough financial part because the gigs slowed down. Yeah, yeah. But you saw an opportunity yeah. to focus on the producing. Mm -hmm. And now I, I assume that's kind of where things are coming up again now yes, because yes, you were yes. investing all of yeah, that time absolutely. into something else. Yeah. And I think for artists, it's a little bit more difficult because as artists, when you're putting out your work, when you're performing at a gig, it's essentially taking a piece of you and putting it into the world. And when people stop responding to that, it can sometimes feel so personal. It can. Do you feel that? Sometimes? Yeah, it, it, it kind of does, eh? Because, yeah, it's tricky, man. Like, there are a lot of thoughts that go through your mind, right? So, one being that a, pre, a, 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 very, a very prominent thought that came to my mind is that because I'm not, I'm not playing the most popular music out right now, it was kind of like, oh, is it because I don't play I'm a piano that I'm not getting as many gigs? All I do is win, win. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, God, like, should I be playing more hip hop? Should I be playing I'm a piano? Then I get more gigs. So, like, you start to question, like, the value in what you're bringing. But there's always value, you know? And it's hard, it's hard remembering that when you're going through these challenges. But... It's very important to remember that as well. So like you said, in the highs, you have to you have to reassure yourself that look, things are going good right now, but there are moments where things are gonna be challenging and it's important for me to understand that they are coming and let me prepare for that. You know? Cause I think when the highs are high, it's very easy to be very comfortable in what you're doing and you're a bit reckless as well, you know, you're splurging on yourself, you're doing very nice things for yourself. Like you said, the financials, um, the financial situation just goes up. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's super important to just take a step back and just realize, okay, things are going well right now. Um, if things don't go well, let me prepare. You know, I think that preparation is super, super important. Bro, I, I need to ask you for some advice, okay? Because okay, okay. I'm a single guy at the moment, <laughs> right? Okay? And yeah. I know that you are literally one of, <laughs> like, you and your significant other are literally one of X's <laughs> or Twitter's <laughs> favorite couples. Oh, man. How do you navigate these ups and downs? Because as gents, yeah, yeah, yeah. we know that there's a certain level of responsibility that yeah, comes, true. especially with financials, just like from the culture that we have and the kind of expectation that we have, yeah. you know, on different gender roles and all of that, you know, there's a certain level of responsibility as a guy. And now when you are an entrepreneur, you have these ups and downs, right? Yeah. And that can also you know, overflow into your relationships. True. So like, true, true, true. how do you manage all of that? <laughs> Dude, it's it's very important to have a partner that understands what you're dealing with, man. You know what I mean? Like, they really have to be, they, they have to, like, realistically, you just have to understand what you're going through, you know? Um, and it's through that understanding then you're both able to navigate, like, what the challenges are. You know, so, yeah, just it's very important to have an understanding partner. Like, I can't emphasize that enough. Um, yeah, there they are all sorts of expectations on social media, but I think you really have to find a way to define your own relationship. I think that's the most important thing, you know. So, yeah, just have someone that's understanding and you guys will both be able to navigate that. So Where do you find these people? <laughs> okay. Hey, I found mine on Twitter slash X. So okay. <laughs> it worked out that way. Hey, yo, hop on to X. <laughs> also, give us a follow. <laughs> and I am Justin. <laughs> and at Yolo Fadek, yeah. Yeah. If you want to tap into some good content, <laughs> relationship I've, advice, I've whatever you need, man. That. I appreciate that, man. <laughs> but, yeah, no, coming to your social media, right? It's like, one thing that really interests me about your career is how you've been able to navigate the social media landscape to build your brand. Yeah. And I see you like really successfully do that on X. 
which like, is very interesting because it's like X is not really a music platform. Yeah, true. It's not really a visual audio. I guess maybe it's more of an audio platform, I guess. But like yeah. people aren't listening to music on X, you know? Yeah. So like how how does that tie into this like thing of building your brand? You know, I think it's it's just a matter of finding what works, you know. So for some time I I for example, I'd kind of see what people enjoy, right? So what are they consuming on there? Or who are the artists they enjoy listening to, right? And then getting creative with that. So one thing I mainly do is I remake songs. So I was just like, okay, cool. How would it sound if I mixed like Brenda Farsis with like Brent Fires, for example? Like, what do the two worlds sound like? You know what I mean? And it's just getting creative in that sense. Or one thing a lot of people enjoy about my music, for example, is like when I give it a more funk house element. So like, ooh, this with a Ketronado vibe, what does that sound like? So it's it's really just creating a whole new dialogue or like world for people to uh, reimagine some of their favorite songs, you know? So that's kind of how I really got my name going on the platform. So. Yeah, you know, or even taking memes like <laughs> that. Um, like my most viral moment was probably when uh, there was a meme that came out in like 20, was it 2020? 2020, 2021, somewhere there. And yeah, like the song already <laughs> itself is alive. So now imagine that on like a really Bro, dope. That's how situation. I found you. Like <laughs> literally. And the crazy part is I feel like the fact that you have one of the most successful ex relationships is because of Ibek Hug. <laughs> is Dude, that the secret? I think it worked out in that way. It worked out. Man sees the back hugs from the get go and that that's what worked out. You need to play that song at your wedding one day, man. No, no, yeah, it has to be there. It has to be. It has to be, bro. Like, just just, just for the sake of it. It has to. Would you ever play a set at your own wedding? I thought about that, eh? Yeah, I, I actually thought about, about it that. now. Like, like, that'd be lit. <laughs> that wouldn't be the worst idea, you know? Like, it saves costs as well. It's cost effective. There we go. <laughs> Struggling entrepreneur? Just learn how to DJ if you're getting married. I mean, exactly, yes. <laughs> no, dope, man, dope. So, like... I saw recently you put out a post celebrating that you've done 100 gigs. I'm on the way to... You're on 100 gigs. Okay. On the way to 100 yes, I'm gigs. On the way to 100. What, yeah. what number are you on at the moment? Uh, we're currently at 90. Well, they've just announced 91. So until then, it's still 90. Okay. So yeah, like literally like nine more gigs and we're at... Or ten, Damn. More, yeah, nine, ten more, ten, yeah, <laughs> ten more, gigs. Yeah. and then we're then we're officially at a hundred gigs, which is crazy. It's actually that sick. is mad, bro. That's a crazy track record. Dude. Is there like okay? So I think that before I ask you this qu last question, okay, you mentioned consistency earlier. Yeah, yeah. How do you keep consistent? Because like we said, I want to tie these two things together, right? The thing that you mentioned about consistency, and then the thing that you mentioned about putting a piece of yourself out of there into the world for people to kind of consume and react to i think that's where a lot of artists struggle because when you're putting yourself out there in the public light you know it's a very stressful thing to do yeah. because you're putting yourself out there to be scrutinized yeah, true and it's, true, true, true. it's a part of you so if people don't like it or if people don't relate to it it kind of feels very personal like we touched on earlier yeah and i think that's what gets in the way of a lot of people being consistent in putting out content or not even starting. Yeah. Like a lot of people won't even get to the point to start because they just like, yeah, it's scary. scary. Yeah, yeah. So you've managed to now reach 91 gigs. You've put yourself out there 91 times. Yeah. Anyone who's played a gig knows <laughs> when you're starting out playing a gig, yeah. it's stressful. Dude, like you're not too sure about the equipment, how yeah, it works, yeah, yeah, dude, your oh, song choice. Yeah, the crowd. Have you ever played a, have you ever played a gig where the crowd is just like <laughs> dead? Dude, I feel like I have. I'm pretty sure I have, but I'll just put that at the back of my mind because it's just like, dude, why am I entertaining this? Yeah. You know, and it happens. It happens. I think it's very important for you to know where you're playing as a DJ, you know, and understand like the crowd you're playing for. So, what helps is, like I said earlier on, going to these events, like showing up, 
so that you can also understand what environment you're in, you know? So you, it, 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 it works both ways where it's like you're supporting artists, but then you're also understanding like, oh, if I were to play here one day, like, the, okay, what's the feel? Like, yeah. what, what are the people really enjoying? So it's being very cognizant of that. Bro, I had a science teacher in school that had this motto of the three Ps. Mm. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. Sorry, five Ps. <laughs> Proper preparation yeah. prevents poor performance. It does. And it's crazy that you mentioned now, like you going to these events and being a part of it was your preparation in a it way. Was, yeah. And it's kind of like, before we started this episode, we were talking about planting seeds. Yeah. I feel like that's like a seed plant. That it you is. put out there. It is. Sometimes they don't grow. Like, yeah, yeah, true. That happens, but you got to plant. That's why when farmers go and plant, they throw out like hundreds of thousands of seeds because some are going to make it, some are not going to make it. Yeah, true. But now, just coming back to that consistency thing, there was one thing that you touched on when you were talking about it, and you mentioned that like those gigs where you played where like maybe the vibe wasn't vibing. Yeah. Like you don't even remember that because you've like put it behind you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that one of the ways that you... Like we're able to remain consistent, not even just in the gigs that you've played, but also like the content that you put out. Yeah. And are there any other kind of ways that you've been able to push that consistency besides, you know, just like putting those things behind you? Um, yeah. So I'd say the consistency mainly comes from the fact that I really just can't see myself doing anything else, you know? So this is like, the only option I feel like I have. So I have to be consistent because, you know, I, I really can't see myself doing like a regular nine to five, you know. Just I can see you being a dancer, bro. Huh? Choreographer. <laughs> Come on. Well, that's a new one. But yeah, uh, but, but generally, like, yeah, like it's always been music based, right? So because, so I got into DJing because it was a great way to network. And also put myself out there. So the kind of people that you meet at gigs are the kind of people you you can most likely get into studio with as well and work with. So I looked at it from that point of view. It's kind of like, okay, oh, Blackie goes to this event. So like, why not go there and like, you know, and, and if the opportunity presents itself, then you could shoot your shot, you know. So that's that's where the DJing thing came from. But the core is always music and for me it's like production so that's always going to be at the center of everything everything else kind of <laughs> is around that sphere you know so with with that yeah me being consistent is me basically saying to myself that i'm i'm i i'd like i'm i'm pushing like i, I need to keep pushing there's no other option for me. Like I can't see myself doing anything else. So that's what really heightened like the consistency or like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what really like helped me um hone in and also remind myself that, okay, look, the last one wasn't that great, but it's fine. We keep it moving. And it's beautiful when you already have a community to remind you of like who you are and like how much they appreciate you. Cause with that, it goes such a long way, you know, that, that also helps you like keep going. Cause it's like, okay, I have these people that I've, I've, I've found a connection with, or they've found a connection to me. Right. So it's important that I keep those people there, you know, like remind them that you are important and you mean something to me. So yeah, being consistent is for myself, it's for them, but yeah, you know, it's, it's those little things. I think you might have touched on this a little bit, but I want us to kind of define it. Okay. What is your why? I think it's it's challenging to say because the main thing is that I'm passionate about it, right? So my passion for it is what literally gets me going. But the why factor has been something that kind of changes over the years. You know, because, you know, like I said, I like the core thing was me wanting to be like the next Michael Jackson. So from a vocalist perspective, and then it shifts on to music production and then it shifts into DJing and then a bit of songwriting. So I feel like with the years, it's kind of changed. But essentially, I would just say like my passion for music is my why. I would say 
like you've created these verticals yeah right the producing the yeah. songwriting the yeah. djing all of these things come together at a center point they do what is that center point i'm still trying to figure that out man because <laughs> so so when yeah. i first asked the question I'm, i said i feel like you might have answered it already and okay i'm okay. hoping this might i don't know shed some light on that center okay. point but the one thing that you mentioned was the people that listen to your music okay. and how part of what you do is for them. Yeah, true. Would you say that's a part of your it why is. or it that is. center point? It is, it is. Um, it's definitely for the people that have like found me and like resonates with what I do. Um, it's for myself. It's for myself, if anything, because, you know, you as a child, you always have dreams and aspirations to become something or do something or like find your purpose in this amazing world you know yeah. so i'd say like the re the reason why i do it is is just to fulfill that childhood dream of becoming um i didn't want to become like the biggest artist i need to clarify that right because of my introvertedness but like a success you know i'd like to be successful that's that's like really my biggest aspiration so it's really just doing it for myself because, like I said, I really can't imagine myself doing anything else, you know. So it's that, it's it's for people who, who would also like to follow their own aspirations, you know. I'd really like to be someone that could remind people that it's possible to really just, like, follow one aspiration and just stick to it, mm. you know what I mean? Even though it might take a bit of a short left or short right, might shift a little but the focus is always there that's the center point so if anything I'd, I'd really like to be an example to those to just let them know that like it's possible to follow your dreams and also just sustain yourself through that because I think for the most part as a creative it's it's a lot of people will tell you that like it's it's not sustainable right and realistically, yes, you know, like you have to do quite a lot in order to find yourself in a sustainable place as a creative. But it's possible to do other creative things to sustain yourself. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's really just reminding people that like and then letting them know that it's possible. Yeah, it's really possible. One of my mentors uses an analogy of like, let's say you're in Joburg and you want to go to Cape Town. Yeah, you could take a train. You could ride a bicycle. Yeah. You could fly a plane. You could walk as well. You could walk. <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah. You still need to have that direction of Cape Town. Yes, yes, yes. That but the way that you get there can change. And like you said, yeah. it evolves. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. And that's where the DJing comes in. Yes. And the producing. And then yeah. maybe the songwriting. Whatever it is, you know. But you have that set destination of where you're headed. Yeah. Now... Talking about that, right? Because we've touched on the past, we've touched on the present. I want us to focus a little bit more on the future. Hundred gig, hundred gigs. Yeah. Is, yeah. Do you have like a place for the hundredth? <laughs> is this is is there somewhere <laughs> where we are all going to for that hundredth gig? Dude, I wish, I wish, um, maybe at two hundred because it was a it was a surprise to see that like I had reached that pinnacle. You know what I mean? Ninety gigs is crazy, dude. Like. Wow, like I really had to, because I only recently like compiled a list of like my recent gigs and it was just like the number kept on increasing and it's just like, damn bro, I've been busy. Like, <laughs> And you don't realize when you're in the thick of it, hey? Yeah, that's the thing, dude. Yeah. Like really looking back at it now, it's just like, that's incredible. So yeah, I wish I had more time to just say like, yeah, the 100 one, we're doing something crazy. Um, but yeah, if anything, I think... I'd like to find a way to like really show gratitude to, to those that like, you know, booked me and also like just came through to the different ones, you know. So I'd like to do that at least. But yeah, to say that, oh, number 100, we're doing, <laughs> we're going to Ponca, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been dope. But yeah, sadly it wasn't, yeah, like it it, it came so quickly. But um, yeah, yeah. Okay. So looking forward to the future, mm. What is your Cape Town in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years? What is your Cape Town? There, there are a lot. 
there are lots because I am doing a bunch of different things. So from the from the DJing perspective, I think it would be really dope to have like a residency in like the UK or Italy, for example. Um, and Is there a specific reason why the UK and Italy? Well, definitely the UK. Um, for the longest time, I've realized that I've resonated with a lot of artists there. Mm. And so being a part of that sphere would just be like, oh man, it would be incredible. It would be so incredible. Also just, um, I was fortunate enough to go on holiday back in 2011, actually. Um, and that experience is so memorable, dude. Like, <sighs> damn, like, wow. Like, and, and for that to be my, I think it was my second international trip. It was just so special. Like, what was special about it? When you look back, what do you, what sits? <laughs> yeah, because I was young, there is quite a bit I, I, I don't remember. But generally, it was just how relaxed I felt. I felt, I felt like really comfortable with, within the different surroundings. So like on the trips to wherever we went, you know, like mm -hmm. the little errands we ran, um, I was fortunate enough to go to like a little festival that happened as well. That was that was insane, dude. That lineup was crazy. I think Rihanna was there. Um, definitely Black Eyed Peas, David Guetta. <laughs> they, they, like it was a crazy time. So also that experiencing that, the little things, you know, um, it there there was a lot. There was a lot, but generally how it made me feel just being there was something very special. And now, as I'm much older, it's now, like, with the artists I'm able to connect with, quite a few of them are from the UK as well. So it's just how, like, interesting, it's, it's interesting how life works that way. I think you know? a lot of the UK-based artists are now picking up on, like, African music. Yeah. And there's sort of a overlap in cultures that yes. we're starting to see with the internet becoming more at the forefront. So now people in the UK are finding it much easier to find African music and also just because of like colonial past, you know, also yeah. the history that we come from, there's a whole diaspora of people that come from Africa yeah. that have never really been able to I, like explore that culture. Yeah. And it puts us in this weird ass position because like me as a white dude who grew up in South Africa, yeah. like there's a lot of things like I know about Africa that someone in the UK who's actually like you know, gen genetically from Africa yes, 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 do yes. doesn't know. So it's true, like, true. we're in this like weird, like <laughs> situation. Yeah, we're yeah. like trying to figure it out. But I think with that, you know, a lot of people focus on the negative side of it, right? They focus yeah. on, you know, are you allowed to say colored? Yeah, you know, like, like there's well. all these like negative conversations around it. But what I would love this platform to be about is the positive side of it because I see a huge opportunity, yeah, especially yeah. for African artists. Of course. Because there's a global interest in the culture here. People yeah. want to go back to their roots and find out, you know, where do I come from and what is this all about? Yeah. There's an interest there. And if you can meet that interest, you're offering value. Of course. There's a certain value that those people appreciate and people in the UK will be willing to pay for that. Yeah. <laughs> Because you, you're meeting that need, that That's need to feel like whatever it is, where it's, I don't know, whether it's just a, a natural affinity towards the music or yeah. whether it's a need to learn more about your culture or feel like you fit in, whatever the need is. Yeah, yeah. If you can meet that need, you know, there's re remuneration available for that. And through the internet, through putting out music, it's never been more accessible than before. Absolutely. And that's what I see you doing. That's why I really wanted to get you on this episode. And I'm hoping that a lot of the gems that you've dropped here, these ingredients that are form a part of, of this greater recipe that you've cracked mm -hmm. is now very valuable for people to watch and consume because, and this is what I meant when I said in the beginning, we're redefining what it means to eat. Yeah. This is what I'm talking about. I hope that we like dishing it up for you here <laughs> because like literally we've got a gent here who's making it work, who's learned all these things and is now sharing the ingredients and the recipe to success. So. Thank you for number one, taking the time to do that, because I do believe that there's a lot of opportunities. I'm hoping that this episode will inspire people to find their own ingredients and they create their own recipe to make, to dish it out, yeah, yeah. to cook. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but 
yeah, I, I think, well, what, what are your thoughts around that? You know, just about that opportunity that exists. Do you see that same opportunity? And like, is that something that you're thinking about and you're consciously working towards or, you know, forming a part of your career in a way? So in terms of, um, yeah, just, just break it down a bit for me. Yeah, so that we both can agree that there's opportunities okay. with international markets, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that something that is involved in your plan going to Cape Town in your future? Like, how are you planning on finding yourself getting to the UK? Yeah. Or Italy? <laughs> so, yeah, I think, I think it's really just doing a lot of the groundwork. So it's understanding who one potentially books someone for, like an Ibiza residency or like understanding what agency assists artists in getting to set places mm. and it's almost like so i think one one beautiful thing about my career is that i felt that i could never stop learning things you know and i think that's what's inspired me to also keep going as well mm -hmm. like it's there's always something you can learn like mm. always always something so with that right it's beautiful that with that mindset, I've applied it into different things. So from the production standpoint, I'm learning a bunch of different things from the DJ networking side, learning a bunch of different things. So it's, it's to me, I can, I'm always willing to start from the ground up, you know, I've never at a certain point where it's like, oh, I'm already here. So like, you know, like I, I can only speak to whoever, whoever, or feel as if I'm entitled to certain things because I've achieved certain things, you know? So yeah. It's really just figuring out how all of that works out, you know, just understanding the skeleton and like, how does one even get to play one show before looking at a residency? You know what I mean? So yeah, just doing a lot of research right now, figuring all of that out. Figure out the skeleton before you start focusing on the meat, right? Yeah. So if you could collaborate with any artist in the world right now, who would it be? Oh, it changes so much. It changes so much, but... Why? Um, okay. No pressure. <laughs> I know. Uh, probably Solange. Solange, yeah. Okay, okay. I, I think some really interesting stuff could come from there. So, yeah. I'm interested to see what people think about that kind of collaboration. If there's something you want to see, let us know in the comments. Tag Solange. <laughs> <laughs> please, please do. Please do. What's the most memorable gig that you performed at? Uh, Narrow by... I believe it was in 2021. So it's interesting because I think it was raining, if I remember correctly. So we had to move the equipment inside and I think they essentially had to start like a setup indoor. So the, uh, this was at uh, Agog, so it's in Joburg. Um, so essentially the setup was outside and it was chilled, you know, just by the pool. There's a little pool there as well. Uh, very chilled vibes, people enjoying themselves. And then the weather decided to do its own thing because it was summer. Makes sense. So, yeah, we decided to move things inside. But now I think the issue now is that I think it was quite dark because there was no setup for indoors. So, yeah, the whole thing was meant to be outside. So it was a matter of, like, moving everything in, figuring all of that out. And now I think I think there was an issue with the equipment or something. But something just wasn't going right. So, like, there's that moment where, like, you have a bunch of people in a room and, you know, it's kind of awkward because, like, no one knows what's going to happen next. So, um, but eventually the guys got everything sorted out and music started playing. And I think I was, a, like, it was close to my set time. So, if I remember correctly, I think there was a DJ that played before me. And, yeah, people were like, okay, cool, you know, just enjoying themselves. So, like, uh Right, right, right. You know, <laughs> trying to adapt to the new environment, right? And being like, okay, cool. Like, I guess the rest of the party's happening in here, which is fine. Um, and then I got to play and, yo, dude, I can't tell you what the energy was like. That specific night. Um, I'll get to post videos when we celebrate like 100 gigs. But, yo, dude, the energy was just incredible, bro. Like, people... I think one thing I appreciate about like um, certain events is that like people came out to have fun, you know, 
they weren't too cool for themselves just being oh i think <laughs> that culture oh when you go to a place like everyone's just chilling in their like, section dude, looking all cool like, on their phones <laughs> like, what are you doing here bro you really took uber <laughs> or spend petrol just to come and sit down and be like bro with a straight face it's like that really that's what i love about the places you play yeah dude because it's not that <laughs> bro it's dude it's never that so yeah the, the energy that night was just different bro like you know and it was just like wow like i'm really doing this i think it's moments like that that really hit for me as a dj because i feel like like i said i've been doing it for so long now that i haven't realized that i've done like 90 shows already so when you have a night like that it's like whoa bro it's beautiful that you get to impact people in that way like give them a night to remember and just create like sp something special for them yeah that so, shared experience that you can never take away dude that will live there forever and on top of that it's like that thing of it rained yeah like yeah, yeah, at an yeah, outdoor you know? event yeah. but it landed up being the most memorable event <laughs> it just shows you doesn't matter where you are if it's a rainy day there's always an opportunity behind that absolutely all right last question okay your go-to hype song uh yo that's tricky uh but anything by sexy red at this point like, okay <laughs> <laughs> let's go anything by her would yeah that's that's like beautiful stuff for Awesome. <laughs> it can't be a particular song because like she'll release something and I'm like, oh, this is my new favorite. Oh, I like this. Oh, this is so dope. So yeah, sexy red. That's my goat. Nice. <laughs> Yolo, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, man. Thank you so much for watching this latest episode of the Seacast. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe. We're trying to achieve a huge mission and we need you to invest in it. The best way to do that is by liking, sharing, and subscribing and leaving a comment down below. By doing that, you help the algorithm understand that we are offering content that is valuable and it will reach more people. There might also be someone out there that just wants to learn a lesson or who might be able to take something away from the podcast. Share it with them. And lastly, if you would like to be more involved in the community, if you want access to opportunities, knowledge from our experience in the digital marketing space, or to connect with other people who are like-minded and uplifting the continent, the starting businesses, and using tech and creativity to make them successful, join the WhatsApp group by scanning the QR code, and we'll chat with you there. Until then, bye.